when you evaluate anything for cause and effect, it's very important that you have many data points. And um, uh, one size just doesn't fit all. Um, the, there's a lot of medications out on the market today that certainly it will work for African Americans, some will not. Case in point, antihypertensive medication. There's some medications that will work for uh, Caucasians, but will not work on African Americans. And the reason probably is because we were not on the research at the ground floor. For that reason, we need to be very much involved collectively on the ground floor anytime that we have any medications being researched. In science, in clinical studies, we want more people, all ethnicities, all genders, to participate because clinical characteristics of a disease may be different in one group when compared to another, and the way a drug responds may be different from one ethnic group to another and from one gender to another. So it's very, very important that people of all genders and ethnicities participate. I think it's of utmost importance to understand how the disease presents across all of us, all human beings, regardless of race, color, upbringing, education. We are all in this together, and there isn't anyone spared from Alzheimer's disease. What I like is getting out in the community, uh, talking about this, because many times in the African-American community, we're a little skeptical and to see other people of color who are on this committee and who also are participating in the studies. I mean, that's awesome. And it, it develops a trust thing. The reason that I became a participant is my father had vascular dementia. And so I wanted, it was twofold, I wanted to be tested to see where I am cognitively. And then also because I think it's so important for African Americans to participate in this type of research, I did it for that reason too. And also it helps me when I talk to people in the community and they ask about the test. What's the testing like? I can tell them from my own experience. Yeah, for the observational study that we are running here at the IADC, I would say it's pretty straightforward. These are part of what I do in my visit. As a coordinator, when people come in for that four or five hours, they see me as the coordinator and we do the consenting and the HIPAA forms to make sure they understand everything about the study from beginning to end. The HIPAA form is your protected health information, which means I can't give out any information that you give me. Everything you give us is kept confidential. We're not allowed to give it out without your written consent. They really are using it for the studies that they say they are and not some other experiments. It's important that we keep everything confidential in research. That's always the case. Um, so while we know our subjects' names and obviously contact information, all of that remains in only in their charts, which are locked. The patients come in if they're interested in being part of the study or they've been referred by their doctor or other caregiver. They can come in and we give them a phone screen and based on their answers from the phone screen, we get background information about family history, medical history, and if they qualify for the study, then they're scheduled to come in for a visit. I thought it was very easy. Uh, they asked you some cognitive questions. We had, I'll call it a mini physical, you know, where they test your reflexes and listen to your heart and your blood pressure, just the normal things. Uh, the only thing that was slightly invasive was a blood draw, which was fine. And then uh, just more and more cognitive testing, fine motor testing, and an MRI. Mm. And to be able to get an MRI of my brain was great. Uh, people say, well, there's no cure for it, so why should I even get my blood drawn and go through all of this? But you have to realize that this research is so they can find a cure, and also sometimes the studies do propel you into studies that can help you down the line. There's a lot of work out there for people. You, no one should ever stay at home and say, I have nothing to do. No one should go into retirement and say, well, I'm going to sit in my rocking chair and spend my final years in my rocking chair. There is much we can do. Even people that can't get around, they're, they're, they're not mobile because they certainly can make phone calls and be able to reach out to people. But I know there's uh, being involved into the research such here at IADC. 
uh, at the Alzheimer's Association, being able just to do the, the walks and even making contributions, making contributions to causes. I think all these things are important.